Hello, my name is Rob Nagel. I'm an actor, sometimes a Shakespearean actor. I'm one of the co-artistic directors of the Antius Theatre Company in Los Angeles, California. I was 13 years old and I was cast as one of Oberon's henchmen in the Virginia Shakespeare Festival production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. I was taller than the Oberon, so I stayed on my knees in tights. And I didn't talk, but I got to watch and listen a lot. That was when I fell for him, I think the first moment. And then that just kept going. So from the age of 13. Other than one of the boy fairies, um, you know, I always loved playing in Petruchio, in the land of Petruchio, uh, even though I was very, very young and not very good when I did it. Um, I think I was 16, <laughs> but I tried. And I liked the confidence that he put on in front of Kate. I don't know if it helped me in my dating, but it certainly made me feel like, okay, if you can put on a good mask, you might be able to woo even a shrew. I think working with Shakespeare has influenced my life in profound ways. I look for, in all texts that I work on, what might tie me back into great works like Shakespeare. I'll look for Hamlet in a piece, or I'll look for a comedy of errors in a piece, or I'll look for Macbeth in a piece. Um, just elevate the work that we're doing in other realms. Um, so in all of my acting work, I always kind of fall back into the bard. Sorry, secret's out. Takes work. A lot of people don't do the work to understand what text is and what, they don't translate the words that he's put out for us. They're archaic terms and you need to understand them. So you get a general wash of Shakespeare when you watch people perform and there's no understanding or comprehension. So audiences feel like, oh, I don't get it. It's only the actor's fault as far as I'm concerned. To my mind, it transcends time. It sounds like the words are coming out of the person in front of you. Um, doesn't feel old, doesn't feel archaic in language. It feels alive and visceral. It feels contemporary without becoming casual and conversational without becoming um, too relaxed. Yeah, that's what I would say. Lady Macbeth has told her husband, it's time. The three weird sisters have made it so, and now, as if he didn't have a way of turning away, he has a vision, and a dagger appears before him. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind? A false creation proceeding from the heat oppressed brain. I see thee yet, in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalst me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still. And on thy blade and dudgeon gouts of blood which was not so before, there's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now o'er the one half world, nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings and withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf, whose howls his watch, thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his design, moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm set earth, hear not my steps. For fear the very stones prate of my whereabout, and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. Whilst I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds too cold breath gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven. Or to hell.